Imagine a world where every day is a battle against nature's fury. Picture yourself standing on a windswept plain, the air thick with the scent of earth and danger. Massive beasts roam in the distance, saber-toothed cats, woolly mammoths, and predators that could end your life in a heartbeat. Your tools are simple. Sharpened stones, wooden spears, and the strength of your small, tight-knit band. This is the world of our ancient ancestors, a prehistoric landscape where survival demanded resilience, ingenuity, and community. But how long could you survive in such a world? Did ancient humans barely scrape past their 30s, as popular myths suggest? Or could they thrive into old age, their wisdom shaping the survival of their people? Today, we're diving into the heart of prehistory to uncover a truth that will shatter your assumptions. Ancient humans didn't just survive. They could live long, meaningful lives, and their elders were the unsung heroes of humanity's story. Buckle up for a journey through time, where we'll explore fossil evidence, modern hunter-gatherer parallels, and the roles of the elderly in a world without modern medicine. This is a tale of grit, compassion, and survival that will keep you hooked until the very end. Let's start with a question that's haunted storytellers and historians alike. How old did ancient humans really get? The image of a prehistoric human dying young, worn out by a brutal world, is etched into our collective imagination. Hollywood loves to paint them as ragged figures, collapsing in their 20s or 30s under the weight of a harsh existence. But is this true? Recent research flips this narrative on its head revealing that ancient humans, from Homo erectus to early Homo sapiens, could live far longer than we've been led to believe. To understand this, we need to unravel two key concepts, life expectancy and lifespan. Life expectancy at birth is a statistic we often hear thrown around, but it's misleading when applied to prehistory. In ancient times, life expectancy at birth was low, often between 20 and 35 years. But this number is skewed by one brutal reality, infant mortality. In prehistoric societies, 30 to 50% of children didn't survive their first five years. Disease, malnutrition, and accidents claimed many young lives, dragging down the average. But here's the kicker. If you made it past childhood, your odds of reaching middle age or beyond were surprisingly good. Life expectancy at age 15, for instance, tells a different story. Those who survived the perils of youth often lived into their 40s, 50s, or even longer. To get a clearer picture, let's look at modern hunter-gatherer groups whose lifestyles mirror those of our prehistoric ancestors. Studies of 12 such groups across four continents reveal fascinating patterns. On average, 63% of children born survived to age 15. Of those, 68% reached age 45, and those who hit 45 could expect to live another 14 to 24 years, reaching ages 59 to 69. The modal age of adult death, the most common age at which adults died, was between 68 and 78, not far off from modern societies with advanced healthcare. This suggests that prehistoric humans who dodged early dangers could live long, robust lives. But what allowed them to thrive in a world without hospitals, antibiotics, or grocery stores? Let's dive deeper into the evidence. Picture a prehistoric dawn. The sun rises over a rugged landscape of forests, rivers, and open plains. A small band of Homo erectus, one of humanity's earliest ancestors, huddles around a fire. Their faces are weathered, their bodies lean from a life of constant movement. They hunt with crude stone tools, gather wild plants, and face dangers we can scarcely imagine. Predators, injuries, and the whims of nature. Yet, in this unforgiving world, some individuals not only survived, but thrived into old age. Homo erectus, first appearing over two million years ago, lived in a world teeming with challenges. Their technology was basic, hand axes, spears, and fire, if they were lucky. They matured faster than modern humans, reaching adulthood in their early teens, which likely shortened their potential lifespan compared to us. 
But fossil evidence paints a vivid picture of their resilience. One of the most striking examples comes from Dimanisi, Georgia, where archaeologists uncovered remains dating back 1.8 million years. Among them is the old man of Dimanisi, a Homo erectus individual who lived to an advanced age, likely his 40s, possibly older. This individual, known as Skull 4, was toothless. His tooth sockets had healed over, meaning he lost his teeth years before his death. In a world where chewing raw meat or tough plants was essential, this would have been a death sentence without help. He likely relied on his group to process food, perhaps mashing plants or sharing soft bone marrow. His survival speaks to a profound truth. Even 1.8 million years ago, our ancestors cared for their elderly. They didn't abandon the weak, they supported them, sharing food and protection in a world where every resource was hard won. This compassion wasn't unique to Homo erectus. Fast forward to Neanderthals, our close cousins who lived 400,000 to 40,000 years ago. Neanderthals faced a brutal existence, hunting large animals like bison and mammoths, often sustaining severe injuries. Studies show 79 to 94% of Neanderthals experienced at least one traumatic injury in their lifetime. Yet some survived into old age thanks to the care of their communities. The most famous example is Shanidar I, a Neanderthal from Iraqi Kurdistan who lived to his mid-40s or 50s despite overwhelming physical challenges. Shanidar I was partially blind, deaf, and crippled, with a withered or possibly amputated arm and severe leg injuries. He couldn't hunt or forage effectively, yet his group fed and protected him for years. His survival wasn't just a fluke. It was a testament to Neanderthal compassion. Other fossils like a Neanderthal from La Chapelle Saint, France, show similar care. This individual, aged 40 to 50, was missing most of his teeth, but was supported by his group, likely fed soft foods. These examples shatter the stereotype of prehistoric life as cold and ruthless. Instead, they reveal a world where community and care were as vital as strength and skill. In a prehistoric camp, the elderly weren't just survivors, they were pillars of their communities. Imagine an elder sitting by the fire, their weathered hands gesturing as they recount tales of past hunts or teach the young how to track a deer through dense forest. Their knowledge was a lifeline, preserving skills and traditions that kept their groups alive. Modern hunter-gatherer societies offer a window into these roles, and their parallels to prehistory are striking. Among the Inuit of Greenland and Canada, elders are revered for their expertise in animal behavior, weather patterns, and navigation. A seasoned hunter might know the subtle signs of an approaching storm or the migration patterns of caribou, knowledge that could mean the difference between life and death. In the Amazon, the Shipibo Kanibo people rely on their elders as healers, using medicinal plants to treat ailments. In Australian Aboriginal communities, elders serve as mediators, resolving disputes with wisdom drawn from traditional laws. These roles likely existed in prehistoric times, where elders' experience helped groups navigate a perilous world. But what about the idea that the elderly were a burden, abandoned when resources grew scarce? The concept of gerontocide, killing or abandoning the elderly, did exist in extreme circumstances. In harsh winters or droughts, some groups faced impossible choices. Among the Inuit, for example, elders occasionally chose to stay behind during migrations, sacrificing themselves to ensure the group's survival. In rare cases, societies like the Heruli, a Germanic tribe from the early centuries AD, reportedly practiced ritual killing of the elderly, though this was exceptional and not typical of hunter-gatherers. Far more common was care and respect. Fossils like the Old Man of Dumanisi and Shanidar I show that prehistoric groups invested significant effort in supporting their elderly, even when it strained resources. This care wasn't just altruistic, it was practical. Elders' knowledge of tool-making, foraging, or conflict resolution was invaluable, ensuring the group's survival. In a world without written records, their memories were living libraries, preserving the skills and stories that define their people.
As the last ice age ended around 11,700 years ago, the world transformed. The glaciers retreated and many megafauna, mammoths, giant sloths, and others went extinct. Human societies adapted, entering the Mesolithic period. These groups were less mobile, focusing on foraging and fishing in local environments. Their life expectancy likely remains similar to their Paleolithic ancestors, around 30 to 35 years at birth, but those who reached adulthood could live into their 50s or beyond, especially with stable food sources. The Neolithic Revolution, beginning around 10,000 years ago, marked a seismic shift. Humans domesticated plants and animals, settling into villages and relying on crops like wheat and barley. This surplus of food should have made life easier for the elderly, reducing the physical demands of hunting and gathering. But there was a catch. Sedentary lifestyles and reliance on a few crops led to nutritional deficiencies. Diseases like tuberculosis emerged in crowded settlements, and class divisions in larger societies meant the poor often faced malnutrition and overwork. As a result, life expectancy at birth in some Neolithic regions dropped to 20 to 25 years, lower than many hunter-gatherer groups. Despite these challenges, those who reached adulthood could live longer than their ancestors, thanks to food surpluses and less strenuous lifestyles. Elders in Neolithic societies likely played roles similar to those in hunter-gatherer groups, sharing knowledge of farming, animal husbandry, and community governance. But the rise of infectious diseases and poor nutrition meant the elderly weren't significantly more numerous than in earlier periods. To bring this prehistoric world to life, let's imagine three individuals whose stories inspired by fossil evidence and anthropological parallels, illustrate the challenges and triumphs of ancient life. Tala, the toothless elder of Dominici, Homo erectus, 1.8 million years ago. Tala's world was one of open plains and lurking predators. At 45, he was ancient for a Homo erectus. His teeth were gone, his jaw smooth where sockets once held them. Unable to chew raw meat or tough roots, he relied on his band of 12. His daughter Quay mashed berries and marrow, feeding him by the fire as he recounted tales of hunts from his youth. Tala's knowledge of where to find flint for tools was invaluable, guiding the group to a quarry that kept their spears sharp. When a rival group threatened their territory, Tala's memory of past conflicts helped negotiate peace, sparing lives. His survival wasn't just a burden, it was a gift his wisdom a beacon for his people. Kale, the wounded Neanderthal, Shanadar, 50,000 years ago. Kale was 48, his body a map of scars. A blow to his face in his 20s left him half blind and deaf, his right arm useless. His band of Neanderthals could have left him behind in the rugged mountains of what is now Iraq, but they didn't. They carried him through rocky passes, sharing bison meat softened over the fire. Kale couldn't hunt, but he taught the young to nap flint into blades, his steady hands guiding theirs. His stories of surviving a cave bear attack inspired courage, binding the group together. When he died, they buried him with flowers, a ritual we found evidence of at Shanadar Cave, showing their love for a man who embodied their resilience. Mira, the Mesolithic matriarch, Europe 8,000 years ago. Mira was 60, a rarity in her coastal village. Her people fished and foraged, their lives tied to the rhythms of the sea. Mira's arthritis made walking painful, but her knowledge of tides and fish migrations kept her community fed. She taught her grandchildren to weave nets, her gnarled fingers still deft. When a storm threatened, Mira's memory of a similar event years before guided the group to shelter, saving lives. Her role as a mediator resolved disputes over fishing grounds, drawing on stories of her ancestors to foster unity. Mira's life showed that age brought not just frailty, but power. Her wisdom anchoring her people in a changing world. These stories, grounded in fossil evidence and modern parallels, show that the elderly weren't just survivors, they were vital to their communities, their lives a testament to human compassion and ingenuity.
The evidence of long-lived ancient humans challenges our assumptions about prehistory. We often romanticize or demonize the past, imagining it as either a brutal struggle or a lost Eden. The truth lies in between. Prehistoric life was harsh, with death lurking in disease, injury, or scarcity. Yet it was also a world of profound connection, where groups survived by leaning on each other. The care shown to individuals like the Old Man of Dmanisi or Shanidar I reveals a universal human trait, compassion. This wasn't a luxury, it was a strategy. Supporting the elderly ensured their knowledge was passed down, strengthening the group's chances of survival. Comparing prehistoric life to modern hunter-gatherers highlights another key insight. Lifestyle matters. Ancient humans ate natural diets, got intense exercise, and lived in tight-knit communities. These factors, despite the lack of modern medicine, allowed some to reach ages we associate with advanced healthcare. In contrast, the Neolithic shift to farming introduced new challenges, poor nutrition and disease, that sometimes lowered life expectancy. This reminds us that progress isn't always linear. Every advancement comes with trade-offs. Finally, the role of elders in prehistoric societies underscores their value beyond physical strength. In a world without books or computers, their minds were repositories of survival skills, cultural traditions, and social bonds. This challenges modern biases about aging, where we sometimes see the elderly as less valuable. In prehistory, they were indispensable, a lesson we might reflect on today. As we close this journey through prehistory, one lesson shines through. The strength of humanity lies in our ability to care for one another. From the toothless Homo erectus of Dmanisi to the wounded Neanderthal of Shanidar, our ancestors showed that compassion was as vital as any spear or fire. They didn't abandon their elderly, they carried them, fed them, and valued their wisdom, even when it meant sacrificing precious resources. In a world of scarcity, they chose connection over convenience. This lesson resonates today. In our fast-paced, tech-driven lives, it's easy to overlook the wisdom of those who came before us. Yet, like our prehistoric ancestors, we thrive when we listen to the experience, support the vulnerable, and build communities that value every member. So the next time you hear a story from an elder or see someone struggling, remember Tala, Kyle, and Mira. Their lives remind us that our greatest strength isn't in our tools or technology, it's in our humanity. Thank you for joining me on this epic journey through prehistory. If you've been captivated by these stories, Dive deeper into the lives of our ancestors by exploring more about the animals they hunted or the tools they crafted. Share your thoughts in the comments. What surprised you most about ancient human lifespans? And don't forget to like and subscribe for more tales from the dawn of humanity. Until next time, keep exploring the past. It's where our story begins. <laughs>